we have discussed uh, I think what is uh, multiple reaction, what is single reaction, I have just given some notes there and also various kinds of uh, yeah, reactions, multiple reactions, series, parallel, parallel series, the Denby reaction is very famous reaction and also that Van der Fusse, Van der Fusse, Van der Fusse reaction also is very famous reaction, famous reaction in the sense that you have the conflict, I think those conflicts you will see now, uh, I mean what is the real conflict in those equations. Right? There are some more also, some more reactions I will also let you know, but before that we should understand the basics like we have what is conversion that all of us know. Okay? Example, if I have A going to R, R going to S, right? Yeah. So, conversion always defined as uh, moles of a reactant, key reactant reacted per yeah, reactant concentration fed. Okay, so that we will write here. Conversion moles of reactant <coughs> reacted or consumed by initial moles of initial reactant that means you know C A naught for example, right that is one. Then we have yield, we have actually yield one where it is moles of moles of uh, desired product divided by initial moles of key reactant that is one and also you have yield two because you know different books will give different things. So, that is why we have to just also note down this again this is moles of desired product divided by moles of key reactant reacted. Then you also have selectivity, again selectivity 1 moles of uh, desired product divided by yeah, moles of undesired, okay, product. Yeah, so this is one way. That means you have to choose one of them, right? That means you know I may have another here. Um, desired may be this, but I may have A again going to T, for example. So, you have to specify that you are uh, defining either based on S or based on T. That is why the another definition is selectivity 2 is again this moles of desired moles of desired product divided by moles of all the products that that is another way of defining so that's why you know like heterogeneous reactions where you have various possibilities for defining rate itself right you can base it on volume of the particles weight of the particles surface area of the particles voidage of the bed volume of the bed there are so many like salary reactor also you take you can express so many ways similarly here <coughs> Also, you have to choose which one is the suitable for you, which will minimize your mathematical representations. Okay? So, that is what? Good. So, this is what are the definitions generally used. Okay, good. So, now once we have this, uh, normally we try to use uh, this one as phi 1 
this as phi 2. These are the two things which generally we try to use and of course, conversion will be there anyway. Conversion you know, conversion is x a only. Okay. If you see for example, uh, uh, Carberry book which I have been telling you, he uses phi 1. That means always this will be in fact, uh, in this case, what is the equation for this, in this case? R. Desired product as a usual I told you R. Okay, this is C R by? What? C A naught. C R by C A naught. Okay. So, like that. And whereas this one, next one? C R by? C R by? C A into X A. 1 minus X A. C A naught minus C A. C A naught minus C A. Okay. So, I think anyway, maybe you are getting confused. Let me write here. This is C A by C R by C R by C A naught and this one is C R by C A naught minus C A. Okay, that is final corresponding to this. If I write here C R F, C R F, C A F. Okay? So, those are the things. So, this is what, what we use and Levenspiel uses most of the time this and Carberry uses this. Right? Okay. So, then what is the method of finding out this yields and selectivity? Because these are all in terms of now moles are in terms of the concentrations. Now, we have to find out what is C r by C a naught if I ask you what is the yield 1. Right? So, if I ask you what is yield 2, C r f by C a naught minus C a f. So, the way I am telling this one is I am trying to give you the connection. In the third chapter itself, you have derived an equation for this A going to R, R going to S. Okay? So, you could have derived what is C R by C A naught. Correct? No? You have done that. So, that is what? That is what is yield 1. Right? So, one way of going with all this is straight away going to the equations like you know first order reaction. If I have a, this is first order, this is first order and also yeah, these two are first order reactions. Then I write the rate equations. If it is elementary, I know how to write the equations. If it is non-elementary, then I have to tell you what is the rate equation. Then go to corresponding uh, reactor. I am just trying to give you the overall picture. What is the reactor? I may use batch reactor or I may use uh, uh, continuous reactors, plug flow reactor or mixed flow reactor or I may use recycle reactor sometimes. Okay? Or I may use semi batch reactor also sometimes. Right? So, you just you know the equations for uh, at least recycle reactor and the, the other three reactors batch, plug flow, mixed flow, recycle reactor and semi batch we, are, we have not uh, discussed here, but again that is only writing the material balance like we have written for uh, all other reactors. Right? So, you have to find out now then uh, which reactor uh, I mean you have to take one rate ex expression one way of doing and then use first batch reactor or mixed flow reactor or plug flow reactor or uh, recycle reactor and then try to find out which will, will give you maximum of yield 2 if you are using this equation or maximum of C r by C a naught. That means, for every reactor you will get for some given uh, production rates you will get one value for C r C r by C a naught that phi. So, then try to find out which one will be the most uh, you know better suited reactor. That is why I told you sometimes recycle reactors are better than even plug flow reactor depending on what kind of scheme you have here. This is one scheme A going to R, R going to S. There is another DNB scheme. What is DNB scheme? Again A going to something else, R going to something else. If this is the desired product, then we have real optimization problem in our hands. So, you have to take one particular reactor, for example, mixed flow reactor as an example and then try to maximize uh, by writing all the equations. Where do you get that maximum C R by C N? Okay, C R by C N. That is this. If I am talking about yield one, and yield two, once you know C R by C N R, we can also easily calculate what is C R C R by C N R into C A F because C A by C N R already I know. Okay, I mean in the derivations you will automatically get it. So the overall picture is that going to each individual reactor and then try to find out. That is the approach taken by Carberry and uh, Smith. All these people. Okay, the all the books we may have around 20-25 books, they can be divided into two parts: followers of uh, Levenspiel, followers of Smith. Okay, 
in uh, Smith and all that, uh, you know, you will never get epsilon and all that. I do not know whether those people who have used Smith book, there is no epsilon there, epsilon A. Okay. Whereas, the followers of all uh, Levenspiel, in all those books you will have epsilon A. Th that means, I mean, what is the difference? Both should give you the same answer. Huh? You cannot get for Smith one answer and uh, Levenspiel another answer. You should get the same answer. Okay. But what is the advantage or disadvantage in these two processes? Delta X improvement, brain, expanding the brain. What is the advantage or what is the disadvantage? Particularly for gas phase reactions and all that. So, that means you have not used any other book than Levenspiel. Huh? Fogler, Fogler is cousin brother of Levenspiel. He also used epsilon. Okay. Yeah. So, you have not gone to some other family. This is Duryodhana and Padavas family. Okay, yeah. So, I think I do not know most of you have gone to only that approach. Actually, both are right, but mathematically, you will have more complications in the other approach where you know Smith approach, where every time you have to write mole fraction multiplied by you know concentrations, all that will think thing will come. That means, every time you have to write what are the total number of moles, then you find out mole fraction, then you calculate uh, total pressure multiply by mole fraction, what do you get? Partial pressure. So, most gas phase reactions in these books, uh, Smith and other uh, party, you know, their party books, only solve the problems, gas phase reactions in terms of partial pressure. Okay? Yeah. Whereas, Levin's uh, you know, this epsilon, you can still use partial pressures and all that, but his thing is directly using that equation, y i into delta. Y i not delta nu by a. So, that is all. That means, you do not have to remember any other thing. This is simplifying. So, you are trying to generalize things, so that it is easy for you to remember and also just proceed. But, I think you are uh, trying to proceed so mechanically, you do not know why this has come, why that has not come. So, that is why I am trying to tell you, at least this point of time, you have two approaches. One is by using epsilon directly. The other one is writing only the number of moles, okay? total number of moles, mole fractions and then calculating partial pressures and then trying to integrate, but that is strictly for which reactions? Gas phase reactions that to changing modes. Okay? That is the restriction that you have to remember. So, that is why again here Carberry and also Carberry and uh, Smith, they, are, they belong to one school. He always writes, in fact, Carberry book is the excellent book for yield and selectivity, really excellent book so many problems he has dealt with and all of them are mathematics. He takes uh, a particular reaction scheme like for example, that Van der Fusse equation or Denby, I think he has not done that well. So, Van der Fusse equation he takes and then he will try to solve for mixed flow reactor, plug flow reactor. Plug and uh, batch reactor both give you the same uh, equations, only one is T and another one is tau. That is all the difference. because we are talking about constant density systems most of the time when you are talking about multiple reactions. Again the reason being that uh, let us first understand what is happening in multiple reactions rather than complicating the problem with mathematics. I told you know if you have too much mathematics beyond certain uh, point of time you will forget what is the actual problem and you will only remember how to solve this problem using some mathematical technique. So, it becomes a mathematical course. Right. That is why we call dy by dx. We do not know which problem you are solving there. right? Or d square y by dx square. Which problem you are solving? You do not know. Because y can be anything, x can be anything. That is what you are going to do exactly if we maximize the mathematics when you are talking about uh, any subject. So, that is why physics is important for us as engineers. What problem I am solving? Because this mathematics is a tool for me to finally get some relationship between concentration versus time. Okay? or versus length, if it is a continuous flow reactor or if it if there is a change in distillation column, I would like to find out what is the concentration change along, along the height of the column right? or absorption also same thing. So, that is why you know that, that is the actual problem, but to solve that probably you have to use very, very difficult uh, or uh, different mathematical techniques to get that particular solution. right? So, that is the approach what they take. And now, I am trying to justify Levenspiel. So, that is why I am telling all this. So, that is why if you see those who have used Levenspiel and also those who have done multiple reactions, he gives some rules. For parallel reactions, what are the rules? Any, anyone remember? You do not have to tell me the rules, but at least do you remember that there are some rules? 
for parallel reactions what kind of reactor i mean uh, reactors will be better for series reactions what kind of reactors are better for series and parallel combination also what kind of reactors are better so that means by looking at a going to r r going to s you have something in your mind that okay this reaction is this reactor is good so that way i think it may be spoon feeding but still that gives you some kind of remembrance where okay by looking at a going to r r going to s you are going to feel that okay in fact plug flow reactor is better for this mixed flow reactor will not give you that much yield when compared to plug flow reactor when strictly when you have a going to r r going to s but that is again for simple simple a going to r going to s or simple a going to r r going to yeah, even a going to s this for simple parallel reactions and simple series reactions but when you have again too much complicated things for example denby reaction you cannot tell because you have parallel as well as series reactions okay so that is why first let us see this kind of rules first and then afterwards we will try to solve the problems and it is now you don't have to learn any new conceptual techniques but it is only the mathematical techniques you have to learn i am repeating thousands of times this mathematical techniques and i know tomorrow morning you first start a differential equation you cannot solve if i give you a problem and then you blame that uh, you know the question paper is very lengthy okay if you don't know anything i mean it can be lengthy i say what do you mean lengthy i am not giving 10 km length question paper only a4 sheet i am giving correct no what else i am giving i am not giving anything else but because as i told you if your writing speed is zero you will take infinite time who can wait till infinite time even this universe cannot uh, be there till infinite time at some point it has to go right so that is the reason why those mathematical techniques are very very important for you and you have to work you have to work you have to work to get marks also in the examinations okay good please take this for analyzing multiple reactions let us assume density in the bracket epsilon i equal to 0 and the reactions are elementary to understand the concepts in real world the concepts learnt here are still valid but the algebra will be messy that means you know you will have more complicated algebra there equations so now of course we have derived what is conversion and what is yield then yield again and most of the time we will try to express our things in terms of yield rather than selectivity but some books strictly i think uh, someone was telling you know that engineering of uh, there is a beautiful name engineering of chemical reactions which book is that who has written that book denby denby is beautiful chemical reactor theory course name ha huh? schmidt yeah smith and schmidt there are two people ha ah. james smith smith spelling s h m i t h ah schmidt okay yeah so he, he has used again i think it is only selectivity what he talks if i remember correctly i just look some time back, a long time back only selectivity he will use so that is why it is only our personal choice and also mathematics here there and here also it will be equally same right so yields only we will take and yield has again instantaneous yield instantaneous and overall yield and overall yield okay yeah this is overall yield in fact what we have discussed here phi 1 is the overall yield okay and uh, i think i can also write phi 1 and phi 2 are overall yields okay why because at the end only we are writing this at the end of the reactor what we have crf divided by ca not and for phi 2 it is crf divided by ca not minus cif okay because we came again already outside the reactor so what happened in the entire reactor only we are taking that's why it is called overall yield but in this time inside the reactor when i look i may have the instantaneous yield defined as instantaneous yield yield uh, yeah defined as this is small phi equal to moles of 
product, let me say it is R formed now okay by moles of moles of reactant again A reactant. So, this is written as D C R minus D C A. Okay, why that minus? Yeah, definition of that derivative is you know always C A 2 minus C A 1. Okay, but normally here we have written C A naught minus C A naught is larger. Actually, it is supposed to be C A F minus C A naught. Okay, so that is why that minus is given there so that you will get a number here positive, right? Positive quantity. Good. So, this is the instantaneous yield, and uh, now in this instantaneous yield, we have to find out depending on the reactor whether you have plug flow reactor, what kind of instantaneous yield equation you get, or mixed flow, what kind of uh, an equation, or batch reactor, what kind of equation, right? Okay. So, that quantification we will go a little bit uh, later, but right now what we have to discuss is to find out, I know this yield, I told you instantaneous yield what contacting pattern will give us the best yield that is the question okay what is the question question is what contacting pattern i hope you remember what is you know it's a long time i have drawn my diagram long time back okay so don't forget that what contacting pattern gives the best yield Okay, that is the question. Okay, what contacting pattern means? In other words, what we are asking is, yeah. So uh, let us do that for parallel reactions first. Parallel reactions. In parallel reactions, we uh, let us take the simplest scheme. It is only just to get the rules first. Yes, this is let us say K1, K2. Okay, this is the scheme, and as we as we told that these are elementary reactions, so it is first order only, right? So when I write R R, what is the equation? Yeah, D C R by D T. If I take you know with respect to this rate, then K1 C A here. Okay. Just for discussion sake, I am not taking initially n equal to 1, but some value n 1. Okay? Yeah. So, then R s equal to d c s by d t, which is k 2 c a, this is n 2. Okay? Yeah. Even though we have told about yield and all that, to discuss what kind of contacting pattern you get, okay, the arguments will be same. So now what I want to do is that I will take DCR by DCS. TT. That means I can take the ratio of RR RS. So which means that this ratio should be maximum. That means RS should be minimum. That's all. I think you know that same argument. Even if you write in terms of yield also, you will get the same conditions only. That will not change. But this will give direct straightforward answer. So, that is why we are taking only for explanation. Good. So, now uh, let us say 1, 2. Then if I write R R by R S, which is nothing but D C R by D C S, again which is nothing but K 1 by K 2 C A to the power of n 2. Okay. This is equation 3. Now, let us discuss this equation. Our idea is to maximize this, so that I will get the maximum r. Okay. So, what are the uh, variables with me to do this? But you know, we do not have luckily, uh, unfortunately, we are not the dictators of uh, what is n 1, what is n 2. Right? That is the nature of those reactions. So, we cannot do anything. So, that is the reason why what we will try to do is that uh, let us take uh, in the first case, case 1, 
if n 1 is greater than n 2, right? Case 1. Okay, what will happen? Because I want to maximize that if n 1 is greater than n 2, for the present, let us assume that we have isothermal system, okay, temperature. That means k value I do not have again choice, okay, because let us understand each at, at one time, okay. So, now when k 1, that means k 1, k 2 constant there under these conditions, and then you have n 1 greater than n 2 means C A should be more, R is more. Not only that, but I think you know that means the concentration of A if as much as possible high, then you will get more yield. Okay, more yield, more R. So that is the condition, right? So that means, yeah, exactly. So now we have to think which reactor will give me that kind of high concentrations when the reactants are introduced into the reactor. Why you only PFR? PFR batch batch also. That also exactly gives you the same thing. So that is why. But the general condition is, C A should be for this. C A should be as high as possible. That is the one. Okay. So then, if two. If n1 is less than n2, the reverse of that definitely. So, C A should be as small as possible. Okay. Then, the other alternative is if n1 equal to n2, then Yeah, uh, no, what we have to say in terms of uh, <laughs> concentration, <laughs> independent dependency, <laughs> okay. Yeah, C A does not influence influence the yield, okay. Good, then what influences now is K 1 and K 2, right. So, um, in uh, general, okay, K1 and K2 only what we have, that means when you are talking about K1, K2 changing, so you have now temperature coming into picture, right? That is the second uh, alternative. So that means, of course, even even here also I should be able to say now N1 greater than N2, and I have two constants. What is the parameter which can characterize the reaction? Uh, temperature is one, but other than that, what are the variables you have in this? Equation K1. Activation energy. Activation energy. Activation energy. Okay. So that means we also learned this. If I have high activation energy, will it favor reactions at high temperature? Sir, you should be low. You should be low so that the reaction will take place quickly. You should be low. Huh? My question is, if you have high activation energy. Will it favor reactions at high temperature? Yes, yes. yes. Why did we say earlier no, no, yes? The temperature increase obviously will decrease. You have to answer that also. No? Please remember the diagram. What diagram? Ln K versus? Excellent. Ln K versus? Ln K, right? Yeah. So now if I have. A, High activation energy, what kind of uh, slope I get? Slope. So, yeah, by get like. Correct, no? So, if I have low activation energy? Like, get like this. So, that means this is k value. So, if I talk about the temperatures over a small change, I have tremendous change there with the temperature. Whereas, here over a small change, I do not have that kind of you know, this is T1 corresponding to 1 by T1, okay? T2, this is also T1, T2. No, please do not get confused, this is corresponding to 1 by T1, T2, right? Yeah, that scale, right? So, that is why this, this if you remember, you do not make the mistake. The, when it is too steep a slope, then a small change in the 
temperature will increase, in, will increase the rate of reaction. Why? K is increasing. When K increases, it is minus R A equal to K into C A to the power of N or C A square or something. So, when K is very, very large with slight temperature. So, that is why now you have to also add that other term E 1 and E 2. So, depending on what is E 1 and E 2, we have to also discuss whether the temperatures depending on the uh, what kind of temperatures you maintain. You, 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 would, you would have chosen for this case N greater than N 2 plug flow reactor or batch reactor. right? So, once you have that uh, system, now you are not satisfied with that. You want to increase further the yield. What do you do? You look at the activation energies. So, depending on activation energies, now if the activation energy of first reaction is let us say greater than second reaction, then maintain high temperatures. You see the rules? These are the beautiful rules. And these rules are same for almost all the cases generally n greater than 0. Okay? We are talking about only generally greater than 0. So, that is how you now bring the temperature and also concentration and then try to choose the best reactor. One is concentration choosing uh, will depend on what kind of reactor you are choosing. High concentration means normally it is plug flow. High will be found even S will be found. Ah, so, but but no. the change in S is yes. smaller than the change in R. Why activation energy again? The same thing. The rate of formation of uh, R is much higher than the rate of formation of S. Yes. Definitely it will increase. Okay? But how much it is increasing and uh, whether your desired product is in getting increased much more than the other product. Right? So, that is why there is a beautiful site, I do not remember exactly now, attainable regions. If you go to Google, always you are in Google only. So, I think now next time when you are in the Google, you just type attainable regions. A T T A I N A B L E, attainable region. This uh, site was started by some South African university. I think uh, you know they are doing wonderful work, particularly for multiple reactions. Attainable regions means what is the maximum yield I can get by using various kinds of reactors for the same reaction. You know, till some uh, value of concentration, one reactor. Beyond that, another reactor. I may add this parallelly or I may use, I am talking about reactors. Okay? I have the given scheme of uh, one uh, reaction, right? given scheme of reaction, maybe Denby scheme for example. Right? So, that means, that is A going to R, R going to S and also A going to something else and also R going to something else. So, now my desired product is R. So, by using any combination of reactors, that scheme is given to me. I am not talking about any more multiple reaction, I have one multiple reaction complicated one. Now, by using any combination of reactors, either parallel series, maybe till concentration 10 percent one reactor, 10 to 20 percent another reactor, I am just telling you know all the possibilities and maybe 30 to 40 another reactor, different combinations, all these combinations maximum R, how can you get? You will see that if you have this kind of uh, you know in the site if you go through, you will see many, many rules there also. That is why in industry, it most of the time it is multiple reactions. In fact, all academicians are cheating you by giving only simple examples, right? Most of the time, because otherwise, if I give you Denby reaction and ask you to solve in quiz, you need ten days. Okay, but ten days quiz I cannot have, no. So that's why I think you know this open problems and all that. Sometimes we give and the assignments and all that we give. But what we teach here is the concepts where whether you use Denby reaction or get Denby's grandfather reaction, no problem the rules are same. Okay? So, that is uh, absolutely there is no problem. That is the reason you know why all academic, I told you also know academic institutions always try to unify the knowledge. I, I told you I think already uh, I do not expect that whatever I tell you you remember also. Okay? So, that is why I am repeating many times. So, what did I tell Sushmita? About uh, yeah, you, university always would like to have that is why name of the you know, academic institution, you know, the university name itself is that. You are unifying many things. Okay? Whereas, industry always thrives on diversity, differences. Okay? So, you know, 
see if a industrialist sits before a pre periodic table he will get confused he does, he does not know what to do but if you tell in one column let us say okay between uh, maybe chlorine and you have no what, what are those things chlorine yeah so then someone says that iodine has excellent market then he will never look any other element only at i2 i have uh, iodine because that gives him more money okay but if you ask a professor to sit before the periodic table oh 103 elements how can you make all 103 look like as one element you know by by unifying the properties of all this in terms of only one quality that means i don't have to remember 103 it's wonderful no so that is why you choose whether you want to become an industrialist or an academician academician means 103 one and there 103 means 103 you have to remember and then see okay iodine best tomorrow morning someone tells no 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 don't go to iodine go to some other you know tell me some other compound huh the chlorine is same thing i think some other element why i say hydrogen everyone <laughs> <laughs> hydrogen production no hydrogen production now on this planet so much re- uh, so much research is going on in uh, terms of hydrogen production and how do you produce how do you store how do you transport all these things are big problems because we think that by producing more amount of hydrogen we can solve the environmental problem because when you burn it you don't get is, uh, co2 you get only water it is very good for us we don't have any way water you produce water <laughs> you produce water collect somehow so that means each car will have a water tank right <laughs> hydrogen tank and then water tank so you can uh, use hydrogen go in the car at the end you take uh, you know water drink and then again come back <laughs> again come back so that is the kind of thing hydrogen tremendous amount of research is going on so that is why industrialist always think that okay now let me concentrate only on hydrogen and whereas this fellow professor always think that okay hydrogen has only one element uh, one uh, what is that electron. yeah electron and uh, you know some other thing has got 23 electrons i am interested more in 23 not in one what is there one in one so like that you know again you will be try to bring that 23 into one and then say that what is the commonality in these two right so that is the reason why these rules are important for us to remember right so these two things please remember when if you have parallel reactions when n is large try to maintain the concentrations as high as possible for the desired product and when the activation energy is very high please remember that activation energy more means the rate of reaction will be very sensitive the rate will be very sensitive if it is desired product what you want and the activation energy in the desired rate is more okay then use high temperatures otherwise in the same example i have k2 all these things are not our choices okay you have to find out sincerely the kinetics kinetics means you should find out order of reaction and also the activation you know the activation energy here then um, that is the property of that reaction only because we don't have any choice there you i may like this reaction this is r my desired product but this fellow has more activation energy then what do you do you have to use low temperatures then again i think uh, abhishek will ask that sir the temperature uh, low means you don't ask ha huh? converse is not true the converse is not true means you know you may say that it's not the rate high okay you may say that sir the rate is falling what do you do yeah again there when you compare you know the, uh, the the production of r and then production of s still production of r will be more so that is how you have to manage that's all the simple rules and the remaining is only mathematics so tomorrow we have on saturday i mean i thought i will complete this parallel reactions so tomorrow morning and saturday this time you are meeting